YouTube channel $900 luxury yacht proudly presents da 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 Nidacor honeycomb and fiberglass four deck patio with storage I made this box out of Nidacor honeycomb panels with fiberglass laid over the top of the Nidacor it's to hold these two fuel tanks on the bow of my boat. I glued the panels together with thickened polyester resin and I've added some more fiberglass cloth tabbing that comes out about four inches on each side of each corner. Before laying in the tabbing I rounded the inside corners with fairing compound so the tabbing could go around a curve instead of a sharp angle and the outside corners have half inch quarter round molding inlaid into the corners. By using the table saw to cut out a little notch in the nidacore where the molding can lay in there and then the, the glass wrapped around the outside of the box was put on over that. I have created a little bit of a problem here because I used a handheld circular saw to cut the panels instead of the table saw and I've left this gap that's maybe a, less than a half an inch at the worst part and then tapers to almost nothing on the other side. But I'm going to want to use some thickened polyester resin to fill in this gap. I'll mix in some chopped glass fibers to the resin to give it some strength and I'm going to use this aluminum angle as a mold to force the top of my addition to be perfectly flat by filling in up to the bottom of the aluminum angle. I'm using wax paper as a release method. I don't want the thickened resin to stick to the aluminum angle. So to prevent myself from gluing the angle onto my box, I'm going to wrap that in the wax paper. And I've learned from experience that the resin is not going to stick to the wax paper so it will make it easy to pull this stuff apart when I'm done. I'm just wrapping the wax paper loosely around the angle. Here's the resin mixed with some chopped glass fibers and enough thickening agent to make it about the consistency of peanut butter. I don't want it to flow or sag on its own. I want it to maintain its thickness and just use the aluminum angle to push it down and make the top surface as flat as possible. And here goes the aluminum angle and you can see how I'm using the interior corner of the angle to mold the outside edge of the box and the top of the build up part. And I'm just using my finger to force any excess resin into the gap underneath the aluminum angle. Now I didn't get it completely filled in and so there's been another layer added. This white fairing compound was put on after I molded the thickened resin. And now it's fairly smooth. There's still some little gaps in places and imperfections but I'm going to have to come back and deal with those later because I'm in a hurry to get this stuff on the boat in time to use the boat this summer. I did the same on the other side and here it's a little bit more obvious some of the imperfections. I'm using the dual action sander 
with 40 grit sandpaper to grind down any imperfections that I've created and to, to make the corners kind of 90 degrees. A lot of the resin had squished out at the top leaving sort of a little ledge there and the sander knocked that down pretty quick. The important thing is that this is very smooth aside from the little gaps here but it, the edge is mostly running in a straight line. I'm going to come back with one more layer of fairing compound to fill in these little gaps here and I'm just going to use a putty knife to spread that in and then sand it down. Here you can see that the what I've built up is now perfectly straight and level with the other sides of the box. And here's a detail of how the 40 grit sandpaper knocks down that overhang. You can see it's taking it off very quickly. I'm keeping the sander flat against the side of the Nidacore panel. And that forces it to just cut away anything that's not in the plane of the panel, which is that overhang that I'm trying to get rid of. Once I've got that straight, I can roll the sander over the edge just a little bit to round the edge so that I'm not creating a sharp angle there. Here's another detail about how quickly the 40 grit and the dual action sander takes down these overhangs. Virtually all the shaping of the parts is done with the 40 grit. And it's only when I want to, when I've got my final shape established and I'm going to try and make the surface a lot smoother and hopefully shiny at some point that I start moving up through higher grits of sandpaper. The higher the number of the sandpaper, the finer the grit. 40 grit is very coarse. 400 grit is extremely fine and will leave almost a glossy surface. Here you can see I'm keeping the sander in the plane of the panel and that overhang comes off very quickly. I sanded the box in preparation for painting it with a rough coat of gel coat. Now the box is on the bow of the boat and I've got some more Nidacor with fiberglass laid on each side of the panel and it's been cut to fit this spot. And I'm just starting to fill in the gap between the box and the front of the flybridge. And I'll continue the box forward as well as make another big storage box on the other side. Here I've cut a walkway through the front of the flybridge. The Carver Santigos have no lower helm so that there's a larger living room. And as a result, there's no windows looking forward below the flybridge so the 
deck of the flybridge is just one step above the deck, the front deck of the boat. So it's very convenient now to be able to walk through to the front deck. Here where I cut through the flybridge, I've added another Nidacore panel to basically hold up what I've cut support away for. And I've got storage on each side of that walkway now. There's actually a lot of storage space under this sloping front of the flybridge. Here underneath the helm station, I've got this Alpacool cooler. It can be either a freezer or, in this case, a refrigerator, depending on where you set the temperature. And when I'm driving the boat all day for long passages to get where I'm going, I have this filled up with sandwiches and cold drinks and stuff that I can get without having to leave the flybridge. Underneath here, ahead of that, there's room for as many as nine of these Sterilite storage bins that I got at the grocery store and everything that doesn't have to be refrigerated or frozen can be in here as far as food goes. I've got condiments, I've got canned vegetables, canned fruit, um, Parmalat milk, coffee, canned cream. To mi I like to have half and half with my coffee so I mix some of the canned table cream with the Parmalat milk and that just tastes better to me than just the straight milk. And this cooler tucks away nicely under there leaving plenty of room for my feet when I drive. I haven't had time to make a cover for the instruments on my boat so I use that tarp. This is the storage box that I built on the other side. This is not the one I was working on in my driveway and unfortunately I don't have video of me making this because I was in kind of a hurry to get going. I've got these cushions which are really kind of nice for sitting on or laying on on top of these storage boxes. There's some mixed two-stroke gas and this little two-stroke outboard for my dinghy that's stored in here. And ahead of that is a whole pile of life jackets for as many people as I thought might be on the boat at one time including my parents, my brother, my three nephews, So these cushions pack in here pretty nicely. I use tie-down straps to hold the lids on these storage bins for now. And it's actually a lot more convenient than having a hinge or something because the outside is curved which wouldn't work well for the hinge and the inside where this little walkway forward is now, the hinge would be on the wrong side. So the tie downs seem to work better. This bin was made just forward of where that bin that holds the two fuel tanks is. Again, it's one tie-down strap seems to be enough to hold it in place. And at the moment, I've got my charcoal grill and 
charcoal lighter, the wire brush for cleaning the grill, and these trash bags have bags of charcoal in them. And I've got them double wrapped in trash bags just in case some rain might leak into this box that the charcoal doesn't get wet. The way this is curved towards the front, this tie-down strap holds it down and prevents it sliding forward and the lid of the next bin, which has those two fuel tanks in it, keeps that front lid from sliding back. And this lid seems to be pretty well wedged in between the sloping part of the flybridge and the lid of the gas box. These two lines carry gasoline to a fuel pump that can be turned on at the helm. And I can, without leaving the helm or stopping the boat, I can pump this extra gas in these forward tanks into the main tanks at the back of the boat. At some point, I plan to make cushions for the lids of these bins because in addition to being storage space, they're also loungers on my new patio on the foredeck. This is one of the nicest features of these storage bins. With the additional bimini tops on the boat, there's always one side of the boat that's going to be in the shade. The biggest issue with this is I have to make sure that I don't fall asleep because I have to watch for other boats and also make sure that the autopilot is steering the boat up the middle of the channel. From time to time I have to get up and make little course corrections with the autopilot. But in the wide part of the river between Merritt Island and West Palm, this works very nicely.